Apple has got a new iMac and I'm gonna tell you why what's inside is actually more important than the cool new colors. The Apple iMac finally has a new design. iMacs have looked pretty much the same since 2012, which in technology terms is basically forever. And they had this big screen and a gigantic heavy foot. They bowed out around the back and then tapered as you went towards the edge. It's a testament to how forward looking that design was that even all these years later, it looks a little out of date, but not terribly so. The same thing happened to the MacBook Air. It kept the same look for many, many years, frankly, a few too many, and eventually they had to do a big refresh. And the same thing is happening here in the same way in that they're getting rid of that bezel. Uh, so you have more screen and less other stuff right in front of you. And in this case, there's also the added bonus that the screen goes from a 21.5 inch, you know, diagonal screen to a 24 inch screen, which is really much more in line with what a mainstream all-in-one desktop is gonna have these days. Now, of course, on top of that, Apple would like you to know that this product now has Apple's M1 chip. That's what they use to replace Intel chips in the laptops, the 13-inch Air, the 13-inch Pro, and also the Mac Mini at the end of 2020. And it's part of this two-year transition period where the Intel systems are going to go away. They're frankly almost gone now. And the new M1 systems are going to come in. And Apple says that's going to give you better performance, especially on optimized uh, software applications things that have been rewritten to be M1 native and also give you better battery life in the laptops. You don't need to worry about battery life, obviously, in a desktop. And then it also it puts the final part of the puzzle under Apple's control. They already made the hardware and they made the operating system. Well, now they make the chip it runs on as well. And that means the Macs, whether it's MacBooks or iMacs like this, are much more in line with iPads and iPhones now. And I feel like you're going to start seeing a lot more bleed over phones that act like computers, computers that act like tablets. It brings to mind that uh, iPad commercial from a few years ago where someone asked a kid using an iPad, what kind of computer is that? And the kid said, what's a computer? Uh, everything becomes the same thing now because they're all running the same chip. Now I've tested a lot of the M1 Max. Uh, I did it back at the end of 2020 and you know what? They're faster on a lot of tasks. If you have software that's not specifically optimized for them, they're frankly about the same as the Intel versions they were replacing, which means they're only gonna get better as more M1 native software comes out and you don't have to use Apple's Rosetta emulation uh, to get an M1 system to run Intel-based software. So I don't have a lot of concerns about adding that M1 to this new iMac, although it's interesting that the MacBook Air and the Pro and the Mini and the 24-inch iMac all basically are the same computer in a lot of ways. They run the same chip with some very minor differences. Some models have seven GPU cores, some models have eight, but generally speaking, it's pretty much the same. We used to call the old 21 inch iMac, which was fairly basic in terms of its power. We used to call it basically a MacBook Air on a stand. And in a sense, that's what this new iMac is. It's one of these M1 Macs that we've already seen. It's put up on a very nice stand. Speaking of which, I like that the stand hinge has moved down. It used to be right dead center in the iMac and that was for balance reasons. The thing was incredibly heavy and if you didn't have that balance just right, it would tip over. Uh, the foot also used to taper out as it came towards you like a big trapezoid. Uh, now it's a nice squared off foot, gonna take up less desk real estate. And frankly, people working at home, as many of us are, if you're gonna have something indulgent like a desktop computer like an iMac, you'll wanna save a little bit of space. Frankly, I'm pretty excited about these colors. Before now, if you wanted a recent Mac with any kind of color splash to it, you could choose on a lot of the MacBooks between space gray and silver and gold. And frankly, these were all pretty muted colors. And if your idea of a big, bold personal statement was going with space gray instead of silver, the colors on these new iMacs may be a little bit too much for you. It does, of course, bring me back to 1999 and the iMac G3, that big candy colored shell version. I think there were 13 colors of that. There were seven colors of this. Some of the colors are only available in the more expensive models. Of course, that's how they get you. And you can also get the new colors in some matched 
magic keyboards and magic mice and magic trackpads. Uh, the mice and the trackpads have a little color accent around the sides. So yes, you can still get the traditional magic keyboard, but you can also get the extended version that has the number pad built in. Apple's had that for a while though, but now color matched. Uh, and you can get a version of the magic keyboard with a touch ID fingerprint reader in it. Now, of course, MacBooks have had touch ID for a while now. Even the MacBook Air has it now, and it's frankly pretty great. Uh, it works very much like touch ID used to on iPhones and iPads. Now, before you even ask, I know what your question is, and the answer is no. It's actually no both times. You can't get the Touch ID keyboard and use it with a non-M1 Mac. You can use it with other M1 Macs, whether it's a, a laptop or if they have, uh, you know, future desktops. Oh, or a Mac Mini. I suppose you could use it with that too, but it's unique in that the Touch ID is connected to the security features on the M1 Mac, so, so that's it. You can't, it's not backwards compatible. You can use the regular keyboard, but you can't use the Touch ID part. Now the second question and the answer to this one is also no. No, you can't buy the colored keyboards and mice and other accessories separately, at least not yet. I remember being very jealous that the iMac Pro came with this cool space gray keyboard and they did not sell that separately. Uh, later on they did. So maybe someday you'll be able to get a Mac keyboard and a magic touchpad in any color you want. So yes, these new iMacs, they have new colors, they're thinner, they're lighter, they've got that new M1 chip, but that doesn't really talk about the most important component in any computer today, and I mean especially today, and that of course is the webcam. Because what do we do all day? We either do videos like this, or we talk to people on video calls that kind of look like this. Well, the new M1 version of the 24 inch iMac adds a 1080 camera. Apple tells me that it's actually a more advanced camera. It's a different, piece of hardware than what's in that 27 inch iMac and it is additionally helped by some uh, camera helper software, they call it ISP software, uh, that does a lot of exposure correction and color correction. And they have that on the 27 inch iMac version two. Uh, Apple says that the M1 powered version of that is even better. So this 1080p webcam is gonna look better than the 27 inch 2020 iMac 1080p webcam. So I hope to get a new 24 inch iMac hopefully in a fun color to start testing soon. That said, based on my previous experience testing the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini all with the M1 chip, I kinda know how this story is gonna go. And frankly, the performance was pretty good. It's interesting, however, that Apple is not committed to putting that M1 in the 27 inch iMac yet. That is much more of a workhorse machine, especially if you work in you know professional video or animation or things like that. Maybe that is Apple holding off a little bit and saying we really want to make sure that maybe we have the M2 or maybe we can support, you know, more RAM or, uh, you know, bigger hard drives uh, before we commit to putting the M1 in that workhorse 27 inch iMac. When they do that, then everyone can really say Apple is just 100% in the M1 game and they're leaving the Intel chips behind. Because especially right now, that 24 inch iMac only comes with eight gigs of RAM, it's expandable to 16. You can, however, I think get up to two terabytes of storage. The new M1 powered 24 inch iMacs are gonna be available to order at the end of April and they should ship in the first half of May.